Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. With the release of Flame 2023.1, we have continued to add additional Python functionality to the Flame products. A complete list of these enhancements, including the new PyTransition in the timeline and more Media Hub controls, can be found in the Flame Online documentation. In this video, you're going to cover two specific functions that should enhance your experience while driving Flame with Python scripting. I'm referring to browsing functionality and in-app messaging. When it comes to browsing files using Python, Flame had the ability to search and select media using Qt widgets. For example, here I have a script that will launch the Qt browser and place the chosen media in a new reel. So if you were to run the script, the generic browser appears and you can navigate to your media. This is simply a browsing window via Qt and you can't define any metadata. This is why I refer to it as being quite generic. So there is the newly imported file in a coloured reel called Qt Imports. Looking at the Python console, you will note that Qt needs to be loaded and you'll need to define a variety of Qt variables just to bring up the Qt browser. With Flame 2023.1, a new object has been added to the Flame API. This is known as the Pi Browser and it will give you a more intuitive Flame experience and it's easier to set up in Python. As a reminder, scripts can be executed via a custom action context menu or the Python console. Here is another example script to perform the same operations, but this time using the Pi Browser object. When you launch the script, you get a familiar looking browser and you can browse to your media. You can even access your bookmarks if any were saved previously. What is super useful to note is that you can define all your resolution metadata as part of the import. This includes setting the color space. This is not possible with the generic Qt browser. Now I'd like to point out that from the Python perspective, the action of selecting the files and defining their resolution in the browser is only storing these values and they must be passed onto another script function like importing clips as an example. So similar to the previous script, the media is loaded into a newly created reel called New Imports and it contains all the resolution settings defined in the Flame browser. This is a more natural and intuitive way of getting your media into Flame. Looking closer at the Python console, you will see the command flame.browser.show to call up the Pi Browser. You can set a title, define particular file extensions if required, set a default path, enable multi-file selection as well as include resolution metadata. This is much easier to set up compared to Qt. From that point, you would then ensure that the metadata that is set in the browser is carried over to the Media Hub as the files are imported. In our example, looking at the clip's metadata, anything that was set in the Flame browser is now applied to the media. You can obviously carry on automating Flame with all the other Python commands. And like I said, you can run scripts via the Python console or add them to the right-click context menu. Another area of the Python API that has been enhanced for better user experience is the on-screen display of messaging and dialog windows. This can range from a simple notification all the way up to choosing different options that may be offered in a script. To illustrate this, here you are in batch and I have loaded a simple script to change the batch duration based on a clip that was loaded in the batch schematic. Looking at the Python console, the first half of the script is about changing the batch duration. The second part of the script is the messaging dialog. 
you can give it a title, set the message, and set the dialog type like an error or a question. This is followed by buttons with a specific action. So putting this in context, if no media is found, flag an error and let the user know that the batch duration cannot be changed for that reason. Finally, add a close button to close the dialog window. So let's create the two scenarios. Here is a batch with a duration of 100 frames and the clip has 168 frames. When executing the script, the batch duration changes to 168 frames and no dialog window appears. So no messages came up because the script could change the batch duration. Let's change the duration back to 100 and this time I'll delete the clip from batch. When the script is run again, no clip is detected in batch and the message dialog displays the error message on screen. To get rid of the dialog window, just click the close button. So this is a great way to inform you if something is not right and you could also potentially recommend how to solve the issue. Our second example shows how you can use the interactivity of the dialog windows to give users choices as well as automate various operations in Flame. So this script has automated a workflow involving the timeline markers. Looking at the Python console, when you run the script on a selected segment, you will get a dialog window that asks a question. Essentially, what kind of markers would you like to use? When you define the buttons, you can add up to three choices and a cancel button. So you can choose between segment and clip. Please note that the last entry in the buttons will always be your default. So this will apply to clip. The next part of the script is based on which button is selected in the dialog window. So you are choosing what will happen next. In addition to this, there is a follow-up dialog window in the script which enables you to choose a colour for whichever markers you chose. One point I'd like to mention here is that you have three colours in the buttons, but you could also use the cancel button as a fourth choice. Like the first script, blue is the last option in the buttons, therefore it will be the default choice in the dialog window. So let's check this out. With a segment selected, you can run the script from the console or as a custom menu action. So the first dialog window asks you to choose between a clip or segment marker. As mentioned earlier, clip markers are the default according to the script. Let's go with clip markers this time. The second dialog window appears and you get to choose one of four colours. Let's go with yellow and that completes the script. So the new messaging dialog windows can help speed up your workflow as well as give you a user-friendly way to make decisions that can be further automated via Python. Just for argument's sake, I'll delete the marker and try the different options in the script. This time, I'll choose segment markers and make them blue. Hopefully the new Pi browser and the messaging dialog windows will continue to enhance your Python experiences when working with Flame. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. And thanks for watching.